In today's NFL, there is a wide pay gap between the top and bottom earning players. In 2017, the majority of the Patriots and Bengals earned less than $2 million per year. Tom Brady, Devin McCourty, Andy Dalton, and AJ Green were all paid significantly more than their teammates in 2017. In fact, the Patriots spent 48% of their total payroll on their top 10 players. This has led front offices to cut veterans in favor of younger and cheaper talent. Right now, the average NFL age is 25.2 years, meaning that most NFL careers only have a 3-5 to five year window. Instead, NFL front offices are spending a high percentage of their money on a small collection of players leaving a core of younger players earning close to minimum wage. In fact, in 2017, the data journalism site 538 found that the eight division winners spent 52.1% of their salary on the top 10 players, leaving around 50% of the remaining money to 80% of the team's roster. While veteran quarterbacks continue to receive lucrative deals, other positions like running backs often sign for less money. This includes former elite running backs like LaShawn McCoy, Ezekiel Elliott, and LeGarrette Blunt, who earn way below most veteran quarterbacks. On average, the pay difference between 30 plus year old quarterbacks and running backs is $4 million. Elliott cuts back, sink, touchdown. Because teams are spending so much on a small number of players, organizations like the Cincinnati Bengals are willing to let free agents go and sign cheaper and younger talent. Bengals select Joe Mixon running back Oklahoma. In 2017, the Bengals' highest paid players were quarterback Andy Dalton and wide receiver AJ Green, earning 13.1 million and 10.3 million respectively. However, the median salary was just 690000 across the entire team, meaning that the Bengals spent 57.9% of their total payroll on their top 10 players. The Bengals filled out the rest of their roster with young talent, signing and drafting 39 players in the 20-23 age range, one ahead of the Falcons, Packers, and Los Angeles Rams. So it's no surprise that a high number of Bengals free agents signed with new teams after the 2016 season. In fact, there was a 38% roster turnover between the Bengals 2016 and 2017 roster makeup. On average, these free agents were paid $1.4 million compared to the 400,000 plus salaries of the rookies that took their place. NFL front offices are obviously willing to spend on quarterbacks, defensive tackles, and defensive linemen, but really unwilling to spend the same on other positions. NFL salary construction is much more stringent compared to the MLB and NBA. It's extremely rare that players earn guaranteed contracts. Instead, salaries are only partially guaranteed, contingent on skill, injury, or the salary cap. Which means that it's better to sign a deal in the MLB or NBA for most athletes, where the contracts are mostly guaranteed. Going forward, it's still unlikely that NFL players will earn money comparable to other sports. I don't see it happening. But do NFL players look at NBA players and think, guaranteed contracts, they make money on their shoes? From the NFL's perspective, low pay and short contracts aren't a big issue. The NFL is an established mega industry drawing high TV ratings year after year. The league has already signed multi-billion dollar deals with Fox and CBS, and also has a lucrative contract with ESPN. Monday Night Countdown is next. And with the Rams and Chargers' recent moves to Los Angeles, the league's revenue will likely continue to grow. Uh, the NFL owners tonight uh, approved the return of the Los Angeles Rams to the market. Uh, starting with the 2016 season. One of the major challenges that the NFL is currently facing are concussions, which have become commonplace injuries in the sport. Research finds that chronic brain disease is caused by repetitive hits to the head, which can lead to symptoms including loss of memory and violent behavior. The reality is that current and former players are susceptible to enduring long-term brain damage. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Why do you believe you have CTE? 
get light headaches every now and again, and my anxiety levels is off the chart. Sometimes I can't be in places certain long, so I have to retreat back to my own place because the anxiety makes my heart beat faster. Johnson is convinced his many symptoms, including erratic mood swings and forgetfulness, all point to CTE. The number of concussions went up this year, and they're going to go up and they're going to go down in any given season. But screenings went up by 108%. The current collective bargaining agreement between the players and the NFL owners expires in 2020, creating the potential for a lockout with growing tension between the two groups based on roster construction and salaries. Which would certainly put a hit on the league's revenue and highlight the NFL's poor treatment of its players.